Welcome back. Today I'm diving into another Chinese restaurant favorite, salt and pepper pork ribs, inspired by Flo Lam, one of my go-to food YouTubers for Chinese dishes. Join me as I tackle the dish for the first time. This recipe is healthier than the usual deep fried versions since the recipe calls for cooking it in an air fryer. Stick around as I share my verdict at the end of this video. Let's jump right in. I've got my pork riblets about 1 kilo, approximately 2.2 pounds. These riblets are about 2 inches long and I'll be cutting them between the bones. Make sure to give them a thorough rinse under running water to remove any bone particles from the butcher's cutting process. My pork ribs have plenty of meat attached to them, so I separate the meat from the ribs to cut up into similar sized pieces. I then marinate my riblets by adding 1 tablespoon each of cooking oil, soy sauce and mirin as well as, as 2 teaspoons of sugar or stevia, half teaspoon of ground white pepper and the same amount of Chinese 5 spice. As per Flo's recommendation, we can marinate the ribs for more than 30 minutes and I opted to leave it in the fridge overnight. The next day, the pork looks well marinated. For the seasoning salt, we only need three ingredients, one teaspoon of sea salt, quarter teaspoon of five spice powder, and quarter teaspoon of ground white pepper. I set it aside. Next, I take about half cup of potato starch and put it in a Ziploc bag. I dredge roughly about half of my pork ribs in the starch. shaking vigorously to coat the ribs well. Then I use an oil spray to thoroughly cover the ribs and meat with oil. Since the recipe doesn't call for deep frying, thorough coverage with oil is crucial for achieving a crispy texture. While Flo cooked hers in the air fryer, I cooked mine in my mini convection oven, which essentially does the same thing. I went with 220 degrees C, around 428F, for 20 minutes. But for an air fryer, your cooking time could be shorter. Let's prep some aromatics. First, I chop up green onions, separating paler parts from dark parts. Optional coriander or cilantro is roughly chopped if using. I also finely mince some ginger, which is optional, but I enjoy the flavors it adds. So I prepared a teaspoon. Additionally, I chop up a couple of bird's eye or Thai chilies for both color and heat. Don't forget to flip over the pork pieces for even crispiness at around the halfway point. When the time is up and my pork is looking ready, I remove it from the oven. First batch out, second batch in. Now I prepare my cast iron pan. Alternatively, you could use a wok or any generously sized pan. Once the pan is hot and slightly smokier, I add two tablespoons of cooking oil on low to medium heat. And add garlic, chili and ginger, followed by the lighter part of the green onion. Once the aromatics are slightly sautéed but not burnt, I add my first batch of cooked pork to warm them up slightly. Now that my second batch is ready to come out, I also add them to the pan. I toss the pork in the pan to coat the meat with the beautiful garlicky gingery aromatics before finally adding the special seasoning salt. I add the salt gradually, tasting before adding more. 
Last but not least, garnish the dish with the leftover chili, coriander or cilantro, and spring onion. The verdict? The flavours are spot on. You can't fault the perfect amount of saltiness and peppery taste along with the addictive flavours of five spice. So you can't help but eat one piece after another. I know I always say this but you should really give this dish a go. If you'd like to try another Chinese takeaway favourite, click the link here for my Kung Pao chicken recipe. Thanks for your company. If you enjoy this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more tried and true recipes. Until next time, keep cooking!